In our study today, quite interesting, Numbers chapter 11, verse 4. And we cannot look at the Israelites and the Egyptians and say, Oh, because I've got to look at this study myself and say, you know what? I've done the same thing. And it may not have been for a bunch of fruits and vegetables. But there are things in our life that we tell God, you know what? We're sick and tired of your blessings. We want the world. I'm tired. Because your ways are hard. And it is. It's a straight, narrow gate. As we look at Numbers chapter 11, verse 4, and a mixed multitude, that means there were Hebrews, Egyptians, and maybe others, that was among them fell a lusting. And when we take the word lust, we think of pornography, sexual gratification. But when we studied our Bible, we look at Scripture with Scripture, Let's take Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. The Apostle Paul speaking to Christians. What shall I say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, but I had not known sin, but by the law. Law brings us to know the knowledge of sin. For I have not known lust, Except the law has said, thou shalt not covet. Paul gives us a definition of lust as covet. Covet as lust. So again, when we take our Bibles, go to Exodus chapter 20. Scripture is scripture. Scripture is scripture, Exodus 20, verse 17. The Bible says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Adultery. Nor is maid servant, nor is man servant, nor is ox, nor is ass, nor anything that's our neighbor's. So governing, <coughs> excuse me, is not a sexual pornography gratification. It was all. Oh, his house looks so much better than my house. Wow, look at that car he has. That car is better than my car. Wow, his wife. You see all that his wife does that my wife don't do? Wow, he's got a pretty, pretty neat dog over there. Old Bays. Which my dog... So lusting and coveting is wanting and as we just come away from Black Friday and we come to the time of Christmas you're coveting and lusting and wanting things that you don't have that the television advertisers and the radio advertisers and the advertisers put before your eyes I've got to have that so Christmas has brought a time of lusting and coveting sin Well, that's not what we're looking at. <laughs> Numbers chapter 11, verse 4, I wanted to explain to you lusting. The mixed multitude fell to lusting, fell to... They, they weren't having adulterous love affairs. Though they probably were. They weren't eyeing other women. They probably were. But that's not the context. They were wanting something. They were... Seeking something. And the children of Israel also wept again. They're crying. Boo hoo 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 hoo. 
They have not gotten what they're lusting, what they're coveting. They are crying. And friends, I have seen this in children's toy stores. I have seen this in the bakery. I have seen this in the children's cereal aisles. I have seen children who want and covet and demand and mom or dad won't give it to them. Boo hoo hoo hoo. There's one thing in particular in my life. You know what? I, I reach out to God and I'm in tears because I haven't got it. Isn't there something that you go to God and God in tears? I don't have it. I want it. And said, who shall give us flesh to eat? Well, look at verse 6. But now our soul is dried away. There's nothing but man besides his manna. God has provided, the Bible says, his angels food. God has provided them a daily means and a supernatural Sabbath means of this bread, this manna. That the Bible says that their shoes didn't wear out, their, their clothes didn't rot away. They are given water from the rock. But that's not good for them. That's not good enough. I'm sick and tired of manna. I grew up and did lobster work. The lobster men, lobster boats. I am sick and tired of lobster. I have had so much lobster in my life. I'm tired of it. Give me some pork. <laughs> Give me some pork ribs with barbecue. You see, I had so much lobster in my life. Israel has had so much manna. I'm getting sick and tired of manna. And Christians on the narrow path, uh, we're so sick and tired, we can't do this, we can't do this. The Lord is plaguing my heart today, last night and today, for a stance I'm taking in my Christian walk, something I'm not going to do. I have conviction about it. I believe what, what they want me to do is an absolute sin. And I'm sitting back, oh, woe is me. And then, but, you know, I'm, I'm forgetting that. God's blessings, God's mercies, God's rewards, God's crowns for doing right far outweighs their loss of doing wrong. Who shall give us flesh to eat? They have been giving the means that will make them be full and not get fat and not be a skinny string pin bowl. That what they have been given to, to them by God has been healthy. Who shall give us to eat? And I think about the blessing I mentioned. There's something in tears. I want, and I forget. You know what? I have been given a previous great blessing. No man on this earth, except during the time of the wilderness journey. To when the, the, the Israel entered to the promised land, I think it was the Passover. And they began to eat the fruits of the, uh, the, the old fruits of the land. No one besides them has ever tasted, I don't know if they will taste in heaven, manna. I don't know if I get to heaven and that's what God's going to give me. Israel knows what the bread of God tastes like. And this is brought to you in the Gospel of John. 
Chapter 6. Verse 5. We remember the fish. I hate fish. Except for tuna fish. Any other fish? Oh. Sometimes I'm glad I'm not in, you know, when they came, when they were fishing and they came on the shore and they saw Jesus and the fire and fish, like, oh, I'm not fish. But they remember the fish. Well, good for them. Which we did eat in Egypt freely. <laughs> That's an interesting word because he removed the word freely. You mean... The fish that you ate in Egypt as slaves? Freely? All right. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 1. Verse 14. We remember the fish we ate freely. Verse 13. The Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage and mortar and brick and all manner of service in the field, all their service, wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Verse 22. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, every daughter ye shall save alive. Numbers 11. We remember the fish that we did eat in Egypt freely. You mean at the cost of your sons? The death of your sons? When Pharaoh was taking your baby boys and throwing them into the Nile River for the crocodile crocodile? And other wild animals. That was free. Oh yeah, America today. We legalize abortion. Free up my lifestyle so I can do whatever I want. Take my baby and kill it. We remember the fish that came out of the same river. That Hebrew baby boys were being murdered. Freely? You mean at the cost of servitude? The cost of being slaves to the Egyptians? Of being served with rigor and, and bitter hardship? That was free? We remember freely. We remember the fish. We did eat in Egypt freely. It cost you bondage. It cost you your, your baby boys. The cucumbers. The melons. And the leeks. And the onions. And the garlic. Six things. Fish. Cucumbers. Melons. Leeks. Onions. And garlic. That's it. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides his manner before our eyes. That's it. Six things. That's going to drive you to go to be away from God. Now, maybe they had the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic with the fish. But that's not even a salad. Where's the tomatoes? Where's the lettuce? Look at Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, verse 39. 
Acts 7.39, Stephen's given the history of Israel. And he says, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, in their hearts turned back again to Egypt. For six things. You know, Paul in his closing letters is Demas has forsaken me, loving the present world. There have been Christians who have fallen away for the most serious, stupidest little things. And we're looking at cucumbers and melons and leeks, and onions, and garlic, and fish. Six things. I looked up and I found, you know what the diet of the Egyptians were? Were barley. They made bread. They said they made beer. They didn't remember the barley. The wheat made bread. We sure couldn't say wheat because God was providing them bread. Garlic, onion, lentils. You mean the very thing that Esau saw his birthright out? Peas, beans, cucumbers, lettuce. They didn't mention lettuce. You only have a salad. Cabbage, fruits. And they said most of the tastiest things they that, that would would they loved in Egypt was the dates. Now we are in Numbers chapter 11. Numbers 13. Moses sends out the spies into the land of Canaan. And we get chapter 14, the spies come back, they give an evil report. And Numbers 14, 33, your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcass be wasted in the wilderness. After the manner of days in which ye searched the land 40 days, each day for a year. Numbers 11 is before Numbers 13 and 14. So when we run back to Numbers chapter 11, and we remember the fish that was not so free. And the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic, the six things. Oh, we remember. They are not in the wilderness for 40 years and don't, don't even know they're going to be in the wilderness for 40 years. They are right now on the present course heading to Cana. Straight to Canaan, the spies have not been sent out, they, uh, and they're not going to die out in the wilderness for their sin of the spies of Cana and not believe in God. So on their way to Cana, Deuteronomy, they forgot the blessings of God. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7. This is what they forgot. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee to a good land, a land of brooks of water, spring water. Waters where their baby boys were not murdered. Of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Oh, fresh and cool mountain water. Oh, they didn't mention water because they were getting water from the rock. A land of wheat. Verse 8. A land of barley and vines. That would be grapes. And maybe tomatoes. Tomatoes are on a vine. 
fig trees, pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, and honey. A land where thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything. Look at verse 10. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he... They, they forgot that. Look at all that God mentions. Water, wheat, barley, vines, figs, pomegranates, olives, honey. Eight things. And he goes on to brass and gold, but I mean, you don't eat that. Oh, but we remember six things, six things are the number of man. Six is the number of man. Eight is the number of, 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 of beginnings, new beginnings. You know what the problem was? It's not that, oh, the fish, the cucumbers, the garlics, the onion. The melons. Is life for us to the promised land, and this is where it hurts. It's not an easy life. It's a hard life. And there are more trials and tribulations and troubles than there are good and wonderful and entertaining times. That's why the, the, these entertainment parks make money to please and thrill you with new rides, new exhibits. Because if you stayed with the original exhibits and rides when they first opened, you would not go back. Oh, I've already been on that ride 200 times. I'm bored. Oh, this manna. They get manna every single day. Manna casserole. Manna cake. I'm tired of the manna. And live with this pain day after day after day. Lord, I've got pain. I've got a weary family. I've got children that are wayward. I, I've got a wife. I've got children. I've got a job. I can't stand. i got things that break down. There's just troubles. There's just problems. And Lord, I'm sick and tired. Give me a preacher who said everything's going to be great and everything's going to be wonderful and give $10 and God will give you $10,000. I want that. Friend, I've been in that boat. And speaking about boat, what about the disciples? Jesus said, let's go to the other side. And Jesus takes a cat nap, and the storms rise, and the disciples, Lord, we're going to die. The water's coming in the ship. What are you going to do? When you look at those storms that Jesus was with with the disciples, the fishermen got upset. Well, this is not how it's supposed to be. Jesus is in the boat. And thanks to this sin-cursed world, we have trials and we have tribulations and we have troubles and we have problems. 
I've been in a valley, and I've used the thing is, I am in a valley, and what did God give me? He gave me a shovel and said, dig deeper. But I'm going to learn something. I'm going to learn what I can't learn when life is good. And I woke up this morning and came to realization and I put on Facebook. And I got to thank God that every single day is not a good day. Because if every single day was a good day, why would I need to pray to God and seek God my Father if everything's great? I mean, if everything's wonderful and I can hand it, I don't need God my Father. And as far as the Christian life is supposed to be wonderful and great, and for those, those men and women in the wilderness, it is supposed to be a great and wonderful time to Cana. 2 Corinthians 11. And we look at the, the Apostle Paul. Let's look the Apostle Paul and let's see uh, the, one of the Christians we actually put on a pedestal. How did he do? 2 Corinthians 11.22 Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they the ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measures, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times I received forty stripes, save one. Thrice three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, and night and day I've been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters. In perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of heathen, perils of the city, in perils of the wilderness, in the perils of the sea, in the perils among the false brethren, in weariness and painfulness and watchings often, and hunger and thirst. What do you mean, God? He was the Apostle Paul. Why is he hunger and thirst? Why is he wearing this in painfulness? That's not what my television evangelist says. That's not what the faith healer says. And I have people tell me, you know, I have been weary. I have been full of pain and sorrow and loneliness. And they say, you're a fool, Stiley. Paul suffered the same. He says, I am in hunger and thirst. The children of Israel have been fed to man, and Paul doesn't even know what manna looked like or tasted like. Israel was fed every single day manna. And Paul, in his journeys, said, I hungered. There were times I had no food. Israel had food, and oh, we're sick and tired of the manna. Cold and naked, is verse 20 said, Israel had clothes that did not wear out. And yet Paul took care, I mean, God took care of Paul. And I have my own perils. Not the same perils and, 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 as Paul had. I would not have been able to handle those perils. But I've got perils in my life and you got perils in your life. And I can sit back 
and weariness and painfulness and loneliness. I can still say God's taking care of me. And I can still say God loves me. And I can still bow my head and repent of my sins and seek God humbly. And when I try to do right and the Christians want me to do wrong, it's like, you know what? All right, I'm trying to help you out. You want to suffer loss in the judgment seat of Christ? Hey, listen, I try to help you out. But I'm not going your way. I'm going to try to do right with what the right that God's told me to do right. And I struggle doing right in my own life. I cannot look back to Egypt. And Egypt's the type of the world in the Bible. I can't look back to my world in Egypt before I was saved. And say, oh, I yeah, I can remember those things. And I can look back and say, you know what? Those things never satisfied me. I had one particular time in the valley that I'm in. Before we passed a package store, I'm like, I thank God I don't go in there for my troubles. And we are in a city where, they, you know, there's just people who are just, who churn to booze and liquor and all that. And they're just, and they're homeless here. And they turned to the, and I said, you know what? Thank God I don't turn to that store. I turned to the store in heaven and say, God, I'm not feeling well. God, I got problems. Yeah, God, I'm complaining. Yeah, I'm griping. People are tired of it. They don't want to hear it. Okay, Lord, I'm telling you. And there are things in my life I cannot open the Bible and say, all right, that, that's a promise of God. I'm trying to trust in faith. Something. I, I hope God, God will answer my prayer, but I can't have a chapter and verse. But I do have a chapter and verse of trials and troubles and tribulation and problems. He will never leave me. If I am absent from this body, I am present with the Lord, or one day I'm going to be raptured out of here. I'm going to a place with no sorrows, no pain, no, and I'm going to get a brand new body and no more suffering. I got that part down. You see, Israel looked to six things in the world and God says, I got eight better things in my land. And don't you dare ever say, oh, I never get like that. Uh, uh, I'm, you know, how dare you feel like that as a Christian? You're a failure. No, 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 no. <laughs> because when you get down in the dumps, you're in the company of Elijah, Job, Paul, It happens. Get your eyes off Egypt and get your eyes back on God. 